Okay, welcome back to Nerdvine, where it's episode 7, and I still don't have a consistent tagline. Uh, everyone's welcome, we're gonna get nerdy about grapes. There we go. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Let's talk about a white that, like Merlot, which we just discussed, is fairly easygoing, and can have a lot of expressions, and you can get really decent quality for not a lot of dollars. So, which wine is that, you ask? Sauvignon Blanc. So Blanc, as it is frequently shortened, um, is an aromatic white grape, and we know what that means now, thanks to the vocab lesson, that is normally expressed as fresh, herbaceous, pretty acidic, with some nice, refreshing citrus notes. Um, like seemingly every other grape we've discussed, it's considered a French varietal, but it is also grown in New Zealand, Australia, Chile, South Africa, and the US. The French, not surprisingly, make some specific Sauve Blancs under very particular names. That was a kind of a convoluted sentence, but it's kind of like Champagne. It's two or three great varietals made in the Champagne region. Sancerre is Sauvignon Blanc made in the Sancerre region of the Loire Valley. And Puy Fumé is Sauvignon Blanc made in the Puy Fumé on the other side of the Loire River from Sancerre. Um, well, fun nerd fact, Puy Fumé is actually the combination of Puy sur Loire, which is the actual village, and then Blanc Fumé is like the local name um, of Sauvignon Blanc in that area. Fumé, meaning smoked or smoky, because of some of the flavor characteristics we're like about to get there. Um, both of these areas make Sauve Blancs that are typically high in acid, lots of green apple, some herbaceous notes. I usually get it as grass, some people will get it as like asparagus. Um, and then the minerality that can be, be perceived as salty, but is more frequently like if it were really delicious to lick a wet rock, like a good way. Um, and then flinty, hence the smoky reference. So like when you strike flint and you get a little bit you inhale it, you can kind of taste it. That was a lot, uh, but when isn't it with wine in the French? And we love it, right? Right, we love a lot. Um, Tohen also makes so Blanc, and these tend to be very fresh and very fruity and run a little bit more inexpensively than the first two. Did I just say more? I meant less expensive. They're less expensive. We're not done with France yet, though, um, because Bordeaux also makes so Blancs from the inexpensive and fresh to the ageable that can develop some honey or nut flavors in the bottle. Um, typically for the ageable Sauvignon Blancs, it's because they're blended with Simillon, and we'll talk about that in a video sometime from now, honestly. As we move to the south of France, um, it gets a little bit trickier because you need the climate to be cool enough for the grape, it needs a cool to moderate climate. But if they find the cool climate, typically at a higher altitude, the fruit notes will tend towards the tropical notes, so maybe some passion fruit or even like tropical citrus, like grapefruit. Marlborough, New Zealand, has actually also become like a main point for Sauvignon Blanc production. So much so that sometimes it can be easier to find a Marlborough Sauve than a French one. The rules and regulations in New Zealand also aren't as strict as France, so there can be a little more, I guess say like a crazy cowboy attitude, but an open attitude towards experimentation and really playing with the grape. So you get harvesting from different sites and then blending and then harvesting at different ripe list levels and blending those experimentation with like oaking, um, even like a little play with time on the lees. Subsequently, you can get really fun Sauve Blancs out of New Zealand. You can also get like wildly different Sauve Blancs from seemingly the same area. So sometimes it's best to do a little research or ask your wine store person, or as I am frequently encouraging, just taste a bunch of them until you find what you like. Um, I'm honestly not going to go into the other regions in this video. I feel like I'm already a little bit longer than I try to keep the video lengths, and we I haven't even started drinking yet. So today I am drinking this Cotsbrook. Um, it's a 2022, and I am just it for a few reasons. Um, first of all, when I saw this logo, I actually thought it was a smiley face with the like whatever. I'm a huge nerd. It turns out it's a bridge. Uh, and second, Rossendale Winery has a variety of fun facts. Uh, that my computer is not turning on to tell me, but basically it's all estate grown and the couple who owns it is very into conservation and trying to do all of their vineyard stuff um, environmentally friendly. It's pretty much everything that I want a vineyard to do um, as like a baseline of being good people making good wine. And of course um, it was 14 bucks and I wanted a moderately priced summer wine because it is like when you're watching this video, who knows what the weather will be, but right now, at the time of filming, it is super hot and super humid. Like, I didn't even bother trying to straighten my hair. Now I'm just thinking of this time that I gave a guy directions and I said, go straight, and he said, never. Which was a great answer, honestly. Okay, so we have, this is nice and light. I mean, 
on the video, as I'm looking at it, it almost looks like water. I promise there's some color to it. Do a little swirl. That's gonna be crisp. I actually get the asparagus this time. Like it's the grass, but I can kind of get the asparagus. I think I doomed myself earlier. Um, if you ever grew up near a gooseberry bush and picked some gooseberries and ate them, this is gooseberry. Uh, if not, eventually we're going to talk about, you know, how to learn some of the more unusual scents, and I have some tips and tricks. If you don't know gooseberry, I'm going to say it probably tastes very passion fruity. Get a really interesting undernote. Okay, if you tasted currants, you're gonna get currants. And if not, it's probably just gonna taste almost like, like if you've ever eaten a grape stem, not the bitter part, just the very rich, savory part. Definitely citrus notes, although I'm not, maybe grapefruit? Grapefruit. I don't get a ton of minerality on the fish. I definitely, though, get um, that herbaceous quality. So, like, I just am chewing on some sweet grass. This is actually, I'm super surprised. Um, I thought this would be your straightforward, like, um, sorry, it's this one. I thought this would be your very straightforward, like, lemon lime, grass, wet salty rock uh, and it was not this is really this is really good so honestly if you can catch it on a sale or I mean I, like I said I think it was 14 bucks um, solid summer refreshing white cheers